Hi, I'm Mr. V. <clears throat> Today we're talking illustrative mathematics, which is our text. We're in unit five, which is solid geometry. And this is lesson three, creating cross sections by dilating. By the end of the lesson, the objective is that you can say, I know that a pyramid's cross sections are dilations of its base with a scale factor ranging from zero to one. That's the objective. So in the beginning, we start with this uh, GeoGebra activity. And if I were to look at it, here it is. First, we're going to try to do this by hand. We're going to dilate this by a scale factor of 2. And if I do that, I'll mark points on it that are twice as far away from this point of dilation as the original. So I'll mark point B prime here. I'll put, let's see, point C would go somewhere like here. Point D twice as far as something like right here. When I connect these, I should get something that's, oops, I do this using the polygon tool. Connect from here to here to here. I should get something that's very similar to the first one, even though the lines aren't exactly parallel. It isn't exact. So now let's try the same thing, only we'll use this dilation tool. To the dilation tool, we select what it is we're going to dilate and the point we're going to dilate it around and a scale factor. And if I do a scale factor of more than one, it's going to get larger, as this does. And you'll notice if I do a drag, I can drag point C, and it becomes different and for the, from my original. So I can move this point anywhere else, and my dilated version becomes different. Then it says, um, what do you notice and what do you wonder? Some things that some students noticed and wondered. Let's see here. Um, here's the response. Things student noticed. The sides of the dilating triangle are twice as long as the sides of the original. Uh, the dilation looks like a triangular pyramid. So this, if we were to go like this and make this a solid, this would be a dilation, this would be a cross-section of, of a pyramid. Um, the triangles look like cross-sections. <laughs> Some things people wondered, is the area twice the area of the original? And I asked this question today, and one student said, oh, yeah, sure. And I don't know that the person was paying much attention, because if I were to do this, notice I'm going to freeze this in its location. I'll lock this in place. Um, and now I'm going to try my best to draw this triangle and see how many of these it takes to make a uh, the, from the blue to make to the green. I'm trying to do this as carefully as I can going along this line. So here's the triangle. And if I move it over to the side and copy it, so I can take this and copy it. Now I can move this piece over here. I can move this piece over here. If I copy it again, there's three times. Wait, that's two right there. It's not, so it's not double. Huh, there's three. It's not triple. And if I were to take this and rotate it 180 degrees, so I'll do that. 180 degrees. No, that's not quite 180 degrees. 180 degrees. A little bit more. That's about right. Not quite, but maybe a little bit. And you can see this makes it four times as large. Wait a minute. My sides are twice as long because my scale factor is two, but the, the 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 area here is four times as large. Why is that? Well, I'm going to show you right now something that's not specific in the lesson. If I have the point of dilation and I delight anything around that point, this would be a point of zero. It has no dimensions. It has no length, no width, no height. It has got zero dimensions. So it's a point. If I were to dilate a figure, I'm going to draw the vertices, I'll draw a line through the vertices of the figure. So if I were to draw this triangular pyramid, say like this, and I were to dilate it by a factor of one, I'm going to get my original original triangle. If I dilate it, dilate it by a factor of one half or some fraction between zero and one, I'm going to get something that's smaller. So this is more than my k is going to be between 0 and 1. And if it's a k is equal to 1 half, then you can see that this is going to be 1 half. Now, the length, this has a length component. Each of these has a 
length component, and it has a width component. If it were a square base, it would be length and length. And this has a length component, which we'll call length two. Length two is equal to my scale factor times length one. So the length is proportional to the scale factor. But what about the area? Well, the area has length times length. It has two dimensions. So if I multiply length times length times k times k, the area is proportional to the square of the scale factor. Or I should say just area two, <clears throat> area one. So it's proportional to the area scale by k squared. And we'll see that more in today's lesson. So if we were in the brick and mortar, which we are not, we're in the COVID, if we were in the brick and mortar, we would be building this by hand, which is a pyramid using different scale factors. Instead, we're going to use GeoGebra. When we use GeoGebra, let's see, here it is, GeoGebra. You'll notice I have this pyramid, and I can change the height, make it where it's not even touching. It's touching a little bit, touching a lot not touching again. And I can rotate this 180 degrees. And now notice I can move this around. And if I move this left and right, you can see I move it left and right. I can go all the way up to the middle. And I can actually turn this on the inside. Oh, wait, transparent. I, won't turn. I can rotate it on the middle of the inside. So that it's like this or all the way around like that. And you can play with this and you can see what's going on with this from the dilation this is another one to play with and we will we would actually spend time in class doing this notice you can move this up and down i can say there's the the, the blue is the one that's i one of my layers i can collapse this to where it's all flat notice if it's flat and i want to dilate this original square which is two by two and i want to get it down to where it's a one by one this would be a one half by one half. And I'm doing it around this point. I'm going to connect from this point to each of the vertices. And I'm going to scale it by one half. So there it is, one half. And this would be flat. If I move it up, I'm going to connect from each of the vertices, from the point of dilation to the vertex. I'll take half of it. So that would get me to this point. Take half of it. So if you looked at it from the point at the top, it'll be the same. Anyway, you can explore this and check it out. Let me come to this last one, which is interesting. I can grab the I can grab the plane and move it up and down. And if you notice on the left, I can move it to where it's going to be different sizes. First thing I want to do is move E. Now, if I'm to move E this way, it's going to go up or down. Move it so I can move it, make it go taller or shorter. I I want to go back to the original. Where is the original? I want to go back here. Now, if I were to move it left and right, I can line it up with point A. And I'm going to do that with point A right here. Let me move this around so you can see it. And it's going to be directly over point A. And when I do this, on the square over here, you can see that it's directly lined up. Well, it's almost directly lined up. I'm trying to get it to line up directly with line A, with point A. There it is. And now, the area of the original is 16. The area of this layer, which has got a scale factor of one-fourth, is one. If I, oh, let me go back to this. I want to show you this by dragging, dragging this. You can see that the, the scale factor, it's got a scale factor this is one fourth times one fourth. That's one sixteenth of the original. Well, the original is sixteen, so this has got a this has got a area of one, whereas my original had an area of sixteen. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. What if we did it with a with a scale factor of two? I'm going to move my 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 layer here. I'm going to move it down to where over on this side it's two. Now my scale factor is one half, so. This is an area four versus 16. Why is that, I wonder? Why is this one fourth the size of the area? Notice the length is one half the size here, one half the size here of this base when I dilate it. And why is the area one fourth? Well, it has a length component 
and it has a width component. So it's proportional, the area is proportional to the square of the scale factor. Scale factor is one half, so this is one fourth times the area. The area is 16, one fourth of the area is one fourth, that's one fourth. And you could do this with three as well. So we could go down to be a scale factor of three out of four, which would be an area of nine. You see this as an area of nine. And so there's different ways of looking at this and you get to play around with it. Now, um, there are some questions to answer for each of these. How is it affected? If dilating the square by a factor of 0.9, are you going to get the same with, as 0.8? So I'm going to show you that one. If I have a figure, I'll draw my figure down here, and up to the vertex, and I'll draw this. It's a pyramid. If I were to scale this by 0 0.1, it would be from the point of dilation, one tenth. 0.1 of this distance, so it'd be like right here. If I did it by 0.9, it'd be 9 tenths of this distance, which would put it right here. Now, if I take this figure, this one here, and I dilate it by 0.9, it's going to be 9 tenths of this distance. Oops, let's do this in purple. Um, purple. No, it's still not purple. Hang on just a second. Let me see if I can get this to be purple. Right here. This would be nine tenths of this. So this one would be nine tenths of this one. So my original, this one here, K1 times 0.9 would get me to K2. K3 would be 0.9 of K2 which is going to be 0.9 times 0.9 times K1, which is 0.8, excuse me, 8.1, not 8. 8.1 times the original, or 0.81, I'm sorry, 0.81 times the original. So it's not going to be 0.80, it's going to be 0.81. That's the idea behind this question. And going back to our original. So... If you scaled it by 0.9, and then you scaled it again by 0.9, it's not going to be 0 .9, 0 0.8. It's going to be 0.81 times much. Lesson synthesis. How does the placement of the scale factor 0.5 differ when you have two pyramids of different heights? Well, it's going to be halfway between the vertex and the um, point. So if I have two figures, one is right here, one little fat one, short and fat, and one of this really tall, like this, and I scale factor this by 0 0.5. 0 0.5 would be halfway from here to here. Halfway, halfway. Halfway, halfway. So either one is going to be halfway, like this. The next question reads, what is the difference between using a center of rectangle that lies at the base of the pyramid as the center of the dilation at the top, at the vertex of the pyramid. So we saw this before. Um, when, excuse me. If I use the vertex up here, I'm going to get halfway like that. If I use the center of this, it's a rectangle, so I use the point right there as a rotation, my dilation will be right there, even and flat. We saw that before, but this would be flat. I'm going to go from this vert from this point to the vertices and then take halfway between each one of them. All right, fine. What would happen if we dilate a rectangle by a scale factor of one tenth or nine tenths using the vertex as the center? And that's what we did here in this figure. Well, this one right before it, where we have it at one tenth or at nine tenths. What is the range of scale factors we can create? And this is important, so I'll draw it again. If I have a vertex and I have a triangular pyramid, I could draw a rectangular pyramid, I'll just draw a triangular. And my K is zero, that's going to be the point of dilation. There is no dimensions to that. Points don't have any dimensions, they don't have length, width, or height. If my K is one, that would be like the base of my pyramid. And so in between here is going to be some scale factor between zero and one. 
that's a big idea for today. And if you get that, you're probably sitting pretty, probably doing pretty good. So circle dilation, what happens when we do a circle? And we could try this. If we have the point of dilation, and we have a circle at the bottom, and we were to dilate it. Notice I'm going to draw my lines here. And I were to dilate it up here, up here. Of course, we're going to get a cone. Uh, this is when you dilate circles. Here's the lesson summary. I'll let you read that on your own time. Notice they did this. They created this mobile during the lesson. And then you can tell me what you think of the lesson, how well you thought think you did today. So that's all I've got for today. Good luck and success.